Hello, I'm Agatha Pemberton. And I'm Puccini Fiddlebottom, and welcome to the 6 o'clock BBC World News. Earlier this week, on August 29th, 1949 at 6 a.m., the USSR successfully detonated its first atomic bomb known as First Lightning. We had not yet been aware of the bomb until yesterday on September 3rd, when a US spy plane flying over the coast of Siberia picked up the first evidence of radioactivity from the explosion. The bomb was detonated in semi palatinsk Kazakhstan. Brick houses and buildings were built as well as bridges, a stimulated metro, and 50 aircraft to test the destructive properties of the bomb. The explosion was equivalent to the American bomb, the Trinity, and was 50% more destructive than originally thought. Here's a photograph captured by an eyewitness at the scene of the explosion. We have a clip of an American newscast with an exclusive interview of a Soviet eyewitness of the bomb. Roll the clip, please. Hello, I'm Marianne Squawks, and I'm here in the Soviet Union exploring what happened with the Soviet's first atomic bomb. I am Svetlana, the daughter of one of the scientists who helped create this bomb and an eyewitness to the bombing, here with me. Good afternoon, Svetlana. Good afternoon, Marianne. How are you feeling after today's events? Very excited. Why is that? We just created our first atomic bomb. I'm sure the possession of an atomic weapon will be welcomed by all the people here and abroad. The test wasn't much of a surprise to us citizens after listening to Vyacheslav Molotov's reassurance about the Soviet Union possessing the atomic secret about two years ago. Well, this atomic bomb surely took us, the United States, by surprise, as we were not expecting it so soon. Thank you for your time, Svetlana. Back to the studio. Thank you, Marianne, for that insightful interview with Svetlana. The scientists responsible for the success of the test were awarded the Heroes of Socialist Labor's Award, or the Order of Lenin Award, depending on their contribution to the success. Now to our experts on the situation, Felicity Gibson and Nigel Humphreys, with some important information on the atomic bomb. Thank you, Agatha. Hello, I'm Nigel Humphreys, a nuclear engineer. And I'm Felicity Gibson, a college professor at Oxford University. The U.S. is not exactly thrilled with the idea of the Soviets being so well prepared with their newfound atomic weapon. But the Soviets themselves feel a new sense of comfort that settles relief over the country. The people of the Soviet Union weren't expecting the detonation of the bomb, but it didn't come as a surprise to them because they knew the USSR possessed the atomic secret. I can tell the U.S. is slightly worried about the USSR catching up in nuclear weaponry and are afraid that they will build a bigger, better, and more destructive bomb than the Trinity and the First Lightning. What type of bigger, more destructive bomb do you think they can build? They can't possibly build a more destructive bomb than the ones that destroyed Hiroshima and Nagasaki, can they? Well, the United States have been hypothesizing a hydrogen bomb. After seeing the devastation that they caused during World War II, I'm sure they are capable of the, possessing the power of a hydrogen bomb. Didn't the United States try to propose a plan to the USSR of giving all weapons to the United Nations? Yes, but Stalin refused the offer and is continuing research for nuclear weapons. Did you know that Igor Kurchatov was the main scientist responsible for the success of the bomb? He graduated from the Physics and Mathematics Department of the Trevita University. But was this his first time being commissioned for atomic research? No, he worked on the study of the atomic nucleus after his time at the U university but was interrupted due to World War II to develop a method for the degaussing of combat ships, where he created a device that helped protect naval vessels from German magnetic mines. There are countless American scientists that are working toward the same goal as him and providing better results. Well, in 1943, he was tasked by the State Defense Committee to head scientific research on uranium and eventually formed the Nucleus Research Laboratory to create his atomic bomb. That's not nearly as great as the nuclear research gathered by the Los Alamos scientists during the Manhattan Project. That's some interesting information that you have, but we will have to see what happens between these two countries in the near future and if they can achieve peace. I very much agree with you, Felicity. Thank you for your time. Same to you, Nigel. And back to Agatha and Petunia in the studio. Thank you, Nigel and Felicity, for the expert input. We have breaking news coming straight from a studio in the United States. Klaus Fuchs, a German physicist who helped the United States build their first atomic bomb, was just arrested for passing on the atomic secrets to the USSR. It's said that he gave the Soviets the explicit information about the United States atomic program while stationed at the US Atomic Development Headquarters during World War II. Apparently, he gave the USSR a blueprint for the atomic bomb, Fat Man. The same bomb that was dropped by the United States on Nagasaki, Japan. It's been revealed that he even gave the Soviets all the information that the Los Alamos scientists knew about the supposed hydrogen bomb. So what does this mean for the future of the United States? It could mean a potential arms race that could heat up the Cold War. Well, we'll have to wait and see what becomes of this. We have just received a clip of the atomic bomb test that was captured by an eyewitness at the scene of the, de um, the detonation. Here it is.
on the bomb site to test the effects of nuclear radiation on human-like animals. The bomb was nicknamed the Joe One by the Americans after Joseph Stalin and contained the equivalent of 22 kilotons of TNT with a solid plutonium core. We have a statement from an eyewitness that was just nine miles away from the testing area. She says, On top of a tower, an unbearably bright light blazed up. For a moment or so, it dimmed, and then, with a new force, it began to grow quickly. A white fireball engulfed the tower and the workshop, and then expanding rapidly, changed color as it rushed upwards. The blast waved at the base, sweeping in structures, stone houses, and machines in its path, and rolled like a billow from the center, mixing up stones, logs of wood, pieces of metal, and dust into one chaotic mass. The fireball rose and revolved, then turned orange and red. Dark streaks appeared, and there were streams of dust and fragments of brick, and board were drawn in after it, up into a funnel. As far as we know, this is the only atomic bomb that the Soviet Union has successfully produced, and is nowhere near being up to par with the Americans. Harry Truman, President of the United States, notified the world of, a, of the detonation with a speech yesterday on September 3rd, despite the Soviets' trying efforts of concealing the test and keeping it a secret. The U.S. followed a trail of nuclear fallout debris, first detected by the U.S. Air Force to the detonation site. The Soviet Union was unaware of the tracking technology the Americans had in hand, and were unable to keep its atomic bomb secret any longer. The Soviet Union has admitted to being in possession of the atomic bomb. That is all the time we have for you today. We thank you for your time. This was the 6 o'clock BBC World News. We wish you a good evening. Responsible for the success of the test were awarded the Heroes of Socialist. Whatever. Kutuslav Molotov. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>